what is up ds3 tv and we are back for the history of russia part two in this history of russia series and let's get into it because you know we're you know doing it and this is by epic history tv you know we love this channel here on ds3 tv and let's get into it. also um follow my twitch i mean yeah follow the twitch channel because it is getting lit on that channel. We have been playing two different games, The Last of Us and Final Fantasy XV, and we've been doing both of those pretty good. Also, um, subscribe to um, the channel because I want to get uh, I want to get thousand subscribers by my birthday. Thank you guys for 640 subscribers right now, though. Thank you guys for that. And uh, yeah, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it all moving. In 1612, Russia was in a state of anarchy. They called it the Time of Troubles. The people were terrorized by war, famine, and plague. Up to a third of them perished. Foreign troops occupied Moscow, Smolensk, and Novgorod. But then, Russia fought back. Prince Pozharsky, and a merchant, Kuzma Minin, led the Russian militia to Moscow and threw out the Polish garrison. Since 2005, this event has been commemorated every 4th of November as Russian National Unity Day. Honestly, that makes me think of, uh, what's it called? It, uh, I can't think of the name. Oh, uh, Black Widow. Because <laughs> it's uh, the Romanovs. The Russian Assembly, the Zemsky Sabor, realized the country had to unite behind a new ruler and elected a 16 year old noble, Mikhail Romanov, as the next Tsar. So that's how you pronounce it, it's Ro Romanov. Okay. His dynasty would rule Russia for the next 300 years. Tsar Mikhail exchanged territory for peace, winning Russia much needed breathing space. His son, Tsar Alexei, implemented a new legal code, the Sabornoya Ulyzhenya. It turned all Russian peasants, 80% of the population, into serfs, effectively slaves their status inherited by their children and with no freedom to travel or choose their master. It was a system that dominated Russian rural life for the next 200 years. The head of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Nikon, imposed religious reforms that split the church between reformers and old believers. It's a schism that continues to this day Ukrainian Cossacks, rebelling against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, recognized Tsar Alexei as overlord, in exchange for his military support. It led to the Thirteen Years' this. War between Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Russia emerged victorious, reclaiming Smolensk and taking control of eastern Ukraine. A revolt against Tsarist government led by a renegade Cossack, Stenka Razin, brought anarchy to southern Russia. It was finally suppressed. Razin was brought to Moscow and executed by quartering. Oh, wow. The sickly but highly educated Fyodor III passed many reforms. He abolished Mesnichestva, the system that had awarded government posts according to nobility rather than merit and symbolically burned the ancient books of rank. But Fyodor died aged just 19. His sister Sofia became princess regent, ruling on behalf of her younger brothers, the joint Tsars Ivan V and Peter I. After centuries of conflict, Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth 
signed a Treaty of Eternal Peace. Russia then joined the Holy League in its war against the Ottoman Empire. Sophia's reign also saw the first treaty between Russia and China, establishing the frontier between the two states. I've heard of Peter the Great. At age 17, Peter I seized power from his half-sister Sophia. Peter became the first Russian ruler to travel abroad. He toured Europe with his Grand Embassy, seeking allies for Russia's war against Turkey, and learning the latest developments in science and shipbuilding. The war against Turkey was successfully concluded by the Treaty of Constantinople. Russia gained Azov from Turkey's ally, the Crimean Khanate, and with it, a foothold on the Black Sea. Peter made many reforms, seeking to turn Russia into a modern European state. He demanded Russian nobles dress and behave like Europeans. He made those who refused to shave pay a beard tax. Peter built the first Russian navy, reformed the army and government, and promoted industry, trade and education. So he made them more um, European than they were before. In the Great Northern War, Russia, Poland, Lithuania and Denmark took on the dominant power in the Baltic, Sweden. The war began badly for Russia with a disastrous defeat to Charles XII of Sweden at Narva. But Russia won a second Battle of Narva before crushing Charles XII's army at the Battle of Poltava. Huh. On the Baltic coast, Peter completed construction of a new capital, St. Petersburg. The building of what would become Russia's second largest city among coastal marshes was a remarkable achievement, though it cost the lives of many thousands of serfs. The Great Northern War ended with the Treaty of Neustadt, Russia's gains at Sweden's expense made it the new dominant Baltic power. Four years before his death, Peter was declared Peter the Great, father of his country, emperor of all the Russias. Huh. Peter was succeeded by his wife, Catherine. Then his grandson, Peter II, who died of smallpox, aged just 14. Empress oh, wow. Anna Yanavna, daughter of Peter the Great's half-brother, Ivan V, was famed for her decadence and the influence of her German lover, Ernst Biron. During Anna's reign, Vitus Bering, a Danish explorer in Russian service, led the first expedition to chart the coast of Alaska. He also discovered the Aleutian Islands, and later gave his name to the sea that separates Russia and America. After Anna's death, her infant grandnephew Ivan VI was deposed by Peter the Great's daughter Elizabeth. Ivan VI spent his entire life in captivity, until, age 23, he was murdered by his guards during a failed rescue attempt. Elizabeth, meanwhile, was famed for her vanity, extravagance and many young lovers. But she was also capable of decisive leadership. In alliance with France and Austria, Elizabeth led Russia into the Seven Years' War against Frederick the Great of Prussia. The Russian army inflicted a crushing defeat on Frederick at the Battle of Kunersdorf, but failed to exploit its victory. Meanwhile, in St. Petersburg, the Winter Palace was completed at vast expense. Oh, wow. It would remain the monarch's official residence right up until the Russian Revolution of 1917. Wow. 
Peter III was Peter the Great's grandson by his elder daughter Anna Petrovna, who died as a consequence of childbirth. Raised in Denmark, Peter spoke hardly any Russian, and greatly admired Russia's enemy, Frederick the Great. So he had Russia swap sides in the Seven Years' War, saving Frederick from almost certain defeat. Peter's actions angered many army officers, and he'd always been despised by his German wife, Catherine. Together, they deposed Peter III, who died a week later oh, wow. in suspicious circumstances. Oh, wow. His wife, Catherine, became Empress of Russia. Her reign would be remembered as one of Russia's most glorious. Epic History TV depends on donations. That was pretty good. Um, talk to you guys in the next video. Also, um, yeah, I'm going to be streaming today at 8.30, so tune in. I'm going to be streaming Final Fantasy XV. Uh, tune in for that. Talk to you guys in the next video, and peace.